Niagara Falls, one of the most impressive sights in the Great Lakes. Every spring, this region of Lake Ontario benefits from that nutrient-rich Lake Erie water that attracts bait fish and trout and salmon that depend on those nutrients. Mark and Jake Romanak of Fishing 411 TV know this area well and rarely miss out on an opportunity to target trout and salmon near shore using the Yakima Mag Lip fished on light tackle. If you're one of those anglers who talks about a trip to Lake Ontario but you're yet to pull the trigger, make the spring of 2024 a milestone in your angling adventures. No one who fishes the Niagara River mouth pulling mag lip plugs in April and May goes away disappointed. Watching a boat behind us fight a fish, all of a sudden we're fighting a fish. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Oh, a little bumpy out on the pond today, but certainly fishable. Just not exactly ideal conditions. Not exactly ideal conditions. Oh man, need suction cups on your feet just to stand up in this stuff. up on that drag just a little bit. Woo, jakers. I'm not gaining any ground on this guy at all. He just came off. No, he came towards me. Came towards me. Oh, he is mad, isn't he, Dad? He is mad. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that board off for you. There we go. You might as well that. stay right there, Jake, because it's a snap weight setup, and uh, you're going to need to take that off as well. fish is all over the place. There you go, Dad. All right. We'll go ahead and get a net ready for you. I'll go slow here on him because he's uh, only got 50 foot here. Oh, now he's going crazy. Woo! What do we have here? Oh, I can see him there wallowing up on the surface. Looking a little silver to me, Jakers. Nice. The fact that he's been at every point of the compass here. Yeah, he's, he's gone good every side of the boat. So. <laughs> he's going to say he's been everywhere. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful fish, yeah. All right, I'm going to keep him coming around this corner here if I can, big guy. Was well, he going to try and get down in my... Oh, I'm sorry there, bud. There nice net job, Jake. Nice. Right there off in the net, too. Oh, look at that. 
the mag lip pops off at the last second, we get that out of there so it doesn't tangle in the net. Now that is a good way to start any morning. Woo, Lake Ontario Chrome, you gotta love it. The silverfish, Chinook salmon. Wow, man, did he fight. What a fun fish to catch. You know, since this fish is in good shape and we're gonna be here for a few days, we're gonna go ahead and just let him go. Let him swim another day, get a little bit bigger. Just to give you an indication, that's the bait that just caught this fish. It's a Maglip 3.5 and how powerful these fish can be. That wasn't a big king, that's a modest king. And you can see that treble hook there, he stretched, he straightened that treble hook literally right out. They give you an indication, this is only 10 pound test line. These fish have got an enormous amount of power and that's why so many of us enjoy catching Chinook salmon, particularly in the spring of the year on light tackle. This week's episode was filmed out of the Niagara region of New York along Lake Ontario. We've been coming here for many years. The reason we continue to come back all these years is because the fishing is quite excellent. But but something happened unique on this particular trip. We've been coming for a long time, but only twice over the years have we ever found the right conditions for the trout and salmon to be stacked up at the mouth of the Niagara River, right where the river pours into Lake Ontario. When that happens, the fish are in shallow water, you can use light line, and it is absolutely a riot. It's something that has to be on everybody's bucket list. It's something you definitely want to experience. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. How are your pursuit? Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Dad, I'm taking your rod. I think I, I saw that. <laughs> Woo, look, look at, at that the, drag. Look at the bend in that rod. Oh, oh my goodness. Smokes. Oh my goodness. I don't even feel bad that I boxed you out for this one. <laughs> <laughs> that so cool. Yeah, that was a moving pick. There was no question about it. I didn't ever have a shot at that, so. I was preoccupied drinking a sip of coffee, so you know what they say. Coffee will bring bites. I'm not even come close to turning that fish around either. No, no, no. Not no. happy. Not happy at all. Well, That's so cool. I'll let you play with him for a while. If we have to clear some lines, I may clear some lines here just to be on the safe side with this one. You know, we've been lucky enough to travel out here to Lake Ontario a lot. And we've been lucky enough to get on the shallow water bite a few times. Basically when I'm in shallow water, we're catching these fish right at the mouth of the Niagara River. And I tell you what, I don't know if there's a more fun way to catch a king salmon. This is my bottom bouncer rod that I use for walleye fishing. This is 10 pound test mono. And I just hooked into a big fish right now. So it isn't gonna take, uh, I'm not gonna whoop this fish and get him to the boat quick, but we'll, we'll fight him here. Nice and slow and hopefully get this big fish in the boat. But he is very mad right now. You know, one of the keys to fighting these big kings on such light line, just kind of letting them do what they're gonna do. You gotta have the mindset that if this type of setup, you're not turning these fish. Not only do you have the powerful nature of the king salmon, but you also have the kind of current that's coming out the Niagara River. And they're using that to their advantage. So not only are you fighting these big, heavy fish, but they're using that current and pushing away from you. So you're just gonna take your time inch by inch and hopefully get that big fish to the boat. Cause let me tell you, the setup that we have here, if this fish wanted to get off right now, he very well could. Now you're starting to get a little ground on him. Not much. <laughs> well, this is about as slow as we can go and keep the boat in the right direction here, Jake. So I think we'll, we'll just take our time. I think you'll be okay with it. All right, Dad, I think I'm finally getting this thing close to the boat. Oh, yeah. Oh, big lake trout here. Oh, hold on here. Get him, Dad. Oh, I got it. Oh, nice. fish kicked, what a lake trout, man. man. That fish kicked my butt. Take a look at this fish right here. This thing absolutely kicked my butt. That rod was pegged and he's just screaming out line. You know, they always say a lake trout don't fight. I don't agree with that at all. I mean, this is 10 pound test, a light action rod. And this fish, I mean, I fought this fish for a solid eight to 10 minutes before I got this fish to the boat. And he fought all the way up. There's a small window out here on Lake Ontario where this water hits that high 40s, low 50s at the mouth of the Niagara River. And what you get is a bunch of bait. And when you get a bunch of bait, you get a bunch of predator fish. You get kings, you get lake trout. And they all pile in here at the mouth of the Niagara River. And so it's light action gear, maglip crankbaits, and big, big fish. 
You know, one of the things is these big fish have so much power and it's unbelievable how hard that fish hit that bait. I fought that fish for quite a long time and you can see what it did to that bait. That's not good. Basically this travel hook is pretty much destroyed. And you have kind of two options. You could take a player pliers and try to bend them back, but I really think that's a bad idea because some of these fish out here on Lake Ontario are world-class fish, and you don't want to lose a world-class fish on your very next bite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this treble hook. I'm going to swap it out for an Eagle Claw Trocar. This one right here, man, it did its job. It landed that fish, and I got it in the boat, but I don't trust it anymore. It's time to take this one off and put a new hook on. This is a challenging place to fish here. If you ever never been to the mouth of the Niagara River, there's a lot of things going on. There's current, and unfortunately for us today, the wind is blowing the opposite direction. The current is blowing, is moving. And so we're fighting river current, and we're also fighting wind-driven waves. And, uh, and it's definitely got us a, a challenge here. Jaker, I'm gonna need a little help here with getting that board off. Yeah, I'll pop this board off for you, Dad. And then I should have a snap weight here in a second. And there you go. And let's see if I can keep tight on this fish. And <laughs> oh, he's there. He's not as big a fish as the uh, as I thought he might have been. Oh, look at that thing right there. Maybe he's a little better than I thought he was. Pretty good fish, Dad. All right. Well, we'll just take our time here. Clear the side here, and yeah, it's a big old lake trout. Come on. Oh, come on here. Don't do that head roll thing. I don't like that. Oh yeah, that's a chunky one, Dad. Thank you, nice son. Fish. Nice fish. Nice, nice fish. We got the fish out of the net. Not quite as big a lake trout, but still a high quality lake trout. And like I was saying, it's just a challenge to fight the wind and the current, but when you get it all together, you can catch some beautiful fish here at Niagara. And uh, we're picking it apart little by little. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, Go prepare. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. Yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! Travel Light Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. You know, if you're looking for an upgrade on your boat this year, you want to look at the zip wake system. Maybe you're sitting around thinking, hey, what can I add to my boat this season? Let me tell you what you want to add to your boat this season. This zip wake 300S Chine Interceptor. Now, what is that? Basically what it is, is it's a modern version of a trim tab. The toughest thing with the traditional trim tab system that we see on aluminum style boats like we fish out of, this STX 2050, is where the heck do you put the trim tab that it's not in the way? Now, let me explain. I have all these transducers right here at the back of the boat. And so traditionally, a trim tab would be positioned about right here. And what happens is it gets in the way of my transducers. What about the other side of the boat? I have a kicker motor and it's just in the way, right? Where am I gonna put that trim tab that the kicker motor isn't in the way? Now with a glass style boat with a stepped hull, you can get away with using a traditional style trim tab. But even with that, a lot of the features that Zipwake offers makes me wanna have one on a glass boat as well. This Zipwake interceptor mounts out on the side of the boat. It's a chine interceptor. And what that allows for me to do is have plenty of room to mount it at the back of the boat. And instead of a traditional style trim tab, it vertically drops up and down. There's a plate inside there that drops it up and down. Now the benefit of this system is being able to keep the boat level even in a quartering sea. If you take any boat, I don't care what brand it is, and you run that boat in a quartering sea, what happens is the boat wants to list to one side. What happens there? You simply get wet because you got waves coming over the side of the boat. The boat's not running how it naturally was designed to run. Any fishing boat is going to run better level in a quartering sea. And so with this system, you can drop the interceptors right or left and it's gonna keep that boat level running in a quartering sea. Now it gets even better with this system because they have an automatic feature with the zip wake. What that means is I can set it to auto mode. There's a gyro built right into the system and it's just gonna automatically keep that boat level. It's so nice. All you have to do is drive the boat, trim the boat out where you want, and the interceptors are going to drop where they need to drop to keep that boat level. 
And let me tell you, when it's rough out, you have plenty of things to do as a driver of a boat as it is. So the zip wake system, really a cool system that can mount to just about any boat. But one of the things I think is cool is it allows us aluminum fishermen guys to have a system mount right at the back of the boat. It's all electronic and it's simple, clean, easy to hook up by yourself. The zip wake system, something you want to check out for an upgrade to your boat. Oh, just barely set that one in this fan, hammered again. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, look at him tear it. Thanks, Jake, for clearing that line for me. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa, oh, that's a, that's a jumper. Tight. That one's a jumper. Try and stay tight on him. Woo! Holy smokes. It's chaos, chaos, chaos is what it is. Woo! When they're that hot. You know, a bottom bouncer rod like this, light 10 pound test line, not very much line out in an extremely red hot green fish. Woo! Oh, <laughs> they're not supposed to jump, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to stay in the water. Well, you better tell this one that he's gonna come to the boat pretty green, I think. If I can get his head up here for you. Look at there that. You go. Nice fish. It's nice to have a big net. There we go. Woo, baby. Wow, hot fish, man, did he beat me up. Man, that was fun, you gotta love it. Silver fish on light tackle. You know, all of our fish have come on the maglip and there's no surprise, man, that's a fishy bait, catches a lot of fish. But we're not catching them using the same presentation. About half our fish are coming on the three-way swivel rigs, which are right off the corners of the boat, going right straight to the bottom. But we're also using inline planer boards, the offshore boards, and this little magical invention right here called the snap weight. And what we do is we let the maglip out 50 foot, we put the snap weight on, and then we let a little bit more line out. And what this weight does is get the maglip deeper. The beauty of a snap weight is that we can get any crankbait much deeper. We're 30, 35, 40 feet of water. We can get down halfway in the water column with a very short lead length, only about 75 feet. And so that presentation, when we fish it on the planer board, goes out to the side. And the beauty of it is, is that's where some of our silver fish are coming. They tend to be up in the water column. And the ones that are fishing closer to the bottom on the three-way rigs, those are the ones that are doing the biggest damage on our lake trout. So it's kind of a one-two punch, and it's been doing really, really well for us today. If you're not familiar with the snap weight, it's an offshore tackle product. It'll catch you a lot more fish. But the one thing all these fish have in common is, boy, they sure like maglip, man. They just are chowing on these baits. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. Woo! It is so much fun watching that rod berry like that. But the best way I can describe it, it's like a like a dipsy diver bite on steroids when you're using this light rods. And you're getting these big fish to go like that. I mean, that rod, you could see it was just absolutely peeled over. This feels like a big lake trout, Dad. It's good. heavy, heavy, heavy fish. You know, one of the reasons these fish are up here at the mouth of the Niagara River is it's all about forage, right? And right now what's happening is it's that spring time frame. That water temperature is about right, high 40s, low 50s. And the other thing that's going on is that in the springtime you get a smelt run. And right now there's a pile of smelt coming up into the Niagara River. And that's why these fish are here. When there's food, you're gonna have big fish chasing all the food. So between the alewives coming into that good temperature range and the amount of smelt that are in the system, there's so much forage right here at the mouth of the Niagara River that there's a ton of big fish out here just chowing down. It's playing good. He is. It's a good fish too. Oh, that is a big lake trout. Oh, Dad, look at that thing. That's a big lake trout. Let's see if we can get him to come this way. It's kind of... Works out good when you start swimming towards us. About the only time I seem to be able to gain any line. <laughs> I know the water magnifies them. That's a big fish. Oh, we got that magnet just pegged in this corner. A little closer, Jacob. A little Jacob. closer. Oh man, oh man, he's got the wrong head angle for me. Look at that. Nice fish. My god, that's a big fish. <laughs> Show him off. Now, we're talking. Remember what I said about all the bait fish that are at the mouth of the Niagara River? Look at the belly on that thing. There's no question that these fish are up here gorging themselves, 
packing on a lot of weight. <laughs> that is so cool. I know we said it enough, but on 10 pound tests, light action rods, gets your blood pumping, that's for sure. You know, we've been catching all these fish today on a product from Yakima Bait Company called the Maglift. It's one of my confidence baits that no matter where I go in the country, I put a Maglift in the water and I just have the confidence something's going to bite it. But when it comes to trout and salmon, that's really what this bait was designed for. And this bait has a lot of action, a lot of wobble, something that they call the skip beat action. And basically what it is, when this bait's working in the water, it's really darting back and forth to the side and it really triggers these fish to biting. Now these fish are up here at the mouth of the Niagara River actively feeding and so when you put a bait like the maglip in front of them that has a real erratic action, it almost messes with these fish's minds. They can't stand it and they really have just been hammering these baits. One of the tips that I do on the maglip is I like to add an extra snap. Now when you buy this 3.5 maglip out of the package, it's going to come with a cross lock snap already on the bait itself. And what I like to do is not just tie to that snap, I like to add another cross lock snap on my main line. What that allows is for that bait to have that much more action, that much more freedom of movement. And one of the things with these trout and salmon is it seems like the more erratic the action of these baits, the better. And so that combination right there, putting an extra cross lock snap on there, gives that bait a little bit more action and these fish are crushing it. You ready? We're trying to lift ready. them up. That's a big lake trout right there, Dad. <laughs> yeah, almighty. <laughs> they just keep getting bigger, Jake. That is why you go to Lake Ontario. And this is such a cool fishery. Near shore, big fish, white tackle, I love coming out here to Lake Ontario. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4-in-1. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. But in the meantime, get out here to Lake Ontario and get you some of these. <laughs> Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, StarCraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls, USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company.